and welcome to Beads Jar. My name's Billy, and for today's project, I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful multi strand necklace with the use of metal beads and faceted beads. For this project, we're going to be working with the 2mm black wax cotton. You want 5 metres of this and we'll also be pre-prepping the ends before you start, cutting a nice sharp angle and use a bit of Fevi-Quick or some kind of quick drying glue and run your fingers over the end just so that the ends don't fray when we start threading the beads. We'll also have the Kumihimo silver plated fastener set, some quick fit glue to attach that, the silver faceted beads and black faceted beads, We've got 4mm jump rings, two variations of metal spacers, both a tyre shape and a round, and head pins with flat ends. Tool wise, I'll need a pair of scissors, two pairs of flat nose pliers, a round nose plier, and side cutters. The first thing I would start off on this project is to take one of my head pins and place on it the faceted bead. So you're just going to thread that on and let that fall to the bottom. You're going to then take your round nose pliers and you want to place the pliers directly above the bead so there's no gap. With a nice tight grip you just want to roll the head pin away from you at a 90 degree angle. You then want to reposition the pliers so I'm going to release the grip and spin the pliers so they're on top. Take your grip again and this time I'm going to use my finger to fold that over the top of the pliers and down towards the bead mat. I'm then going to take my pliers and pop them into the loop and you have to be quite firm with this at this bit. You're going to wrap underneath the pliers and you're going to bring that round so as I'm coming round, I'm also coiling down. A bit of firmness just to pull on that head pin. And then we're going to take that excess wire away. So I'm just going to pull that up a bit and use my cutters to get nice and close and take that excess wire away. So we've got our loop on top. I'm going to just show you again bit quicker this time. So we go on with the bead, pliers above, push away, reposition your pliers, bring that over the top and down, check you've got your question mark shape, into the loop and then you're going to wrap around. So wrap under and then you're bringing that all the way around and as you do spiral down. And then we take the wire away. Now I've just left a bit of a lip on the wire there. If this happens to you, you can just use your flat nose pliers and you can just tease that in. So just be careful, it is a glass bead, so you don't want to crush the glass bead. But you can literally just smooth that little lip in on there. So I've already gone ahead and got most of mine done and as you can see we've also got the jump rings on there. So put all your facets on the head pins and make the loops and then once you've got your loops you're going to open the jump rings. So you're just going to hold one side and bring one towards you to open the ring and then we're going to hook the loop on the head pin that you've been creating onto the jump ring. This is just going to give these a bit more movement when they're threaded up. So we're just going to open that one and add that to the black facet that we did. Close that bit together. So then what you want to do is move on to threading the beads onto the thread. And as I mentioned earlier, it is best if you've pre-prepared. So you cut a sharp diagonal in your cotton and I've run the glue over it just to give me a really 
firm point without any fraying happening whilst I'm threading my beads on. You can literally add whatever order you want here. So I'm going to start with three of these metal beads and then after the three round metal I'm going to thread a black facet. So I'm going through the jump ring not the actual head pin loop and that's going to go onto my cotton and then I'm going to add one two you don't have to just do three space bees you can add four it's completely up to you at this point four I'm going to add four and a silver that's it So we want two of the strands out of the five with the thread on them. And here's one I made up earlier. So that's about how full you want each of the strands. So we're just going to have two with beads on. And as you can see, we've got the mixture of the round and the tire space of beads on there. And I'm just going to finish this one and then we'll move on to attaching the fastener. So we now have the two strands that are completed and what you're first going to do is the top strand is going to be the shorter length to our necklace. This is going to be a multiple strand necklace so choose the length for your highest necklace and then make the next beaded strand a fraction lower. So I'm probably going to do maybe about a centimetre in difference. So I'm just going to cut away the thread. I'm just going to get them positioned so that the beads are in the centre of my thread. choose the top length for my necklace. So this is the shorter one and I'm just going to literally go straight through the cotton with my scissors. And then I'm moving on to my next length. So I'm just going to hold that up so I can make sure I'm happy with where everything's sitting and if the gap's to my liking. I want them to be more distance. If the beads need jiggling around afterwards, that's okay, we can do that. So I'm going to set it that sort of distance away and again come back to cut through the thread. Now these two strands are the only ones that are going to have beads, but we're also going to have seven strands in total, so we're actually just going to have some plain black wax cotton strands. You really don't need to be as pedantic about measuring these up so I'm just using one of my pieces that I had there and I'm just going to roughly create a drop with that. If the wire is a bit springy this isn't a problem we're gonna you can always hold it over a kettle while it's steaming obviously be careful of your hands and uh, it will relax the cotton so it'll hang down so I'm just going to cut that one I'm doing seven of these in total, including my two with beads on. So we've got three, my next piece of thread, and you're just going to stagger the lengths as you go. So we've got three, this is my fourth one. Let's see where that sits. So a bit low, I'm going to just bring that up a little bit more. I quite like that one. And cut through. Four. This is why we had lots of meters, so I've just got another new meter here and I can cut this to what I want now. So just make sure your edges are flush and then you can choose the length for your strand. I wouldn't suggest going too much higher than the beaded one at the top. 
just make sure that's in the right position and then cut through. So five strands here, six strand being done. I'm not paying too much attention as where they're sat, um, if they're wrapping around each other. We'll sort that out when we finalise with gluing to each end. So I'm just going to do my sixth and then we're on to our seventh final strand. cord left over but I'm happy with the lens that I've chosen for this project so that's okay and quite plain and simply now we're just going to attach the end so we want to make sure all the ends are together and level as I say when we move on to this next side then we can make sure that the cords aren't wrapped into each other and we'll loop them around and it will make it sit much better and we can also jig along any beads to position them. So I'm now going to take my Kumihino end and I firstly want to just always check that all my strands fit into the end. It should be quite a tight fit, we don't want any bagginess there, so it does, it fits really well and they are all sat on there together. So now I know that, I can actually go ahead and pop my glue in my end and then I'll take these back and put them in together. So you just want to take your lid off your very quick and you don't need masses of this stuff, it is strong, so you don't need to go crazy with it. And you're just gonna pop a few drops of that into your Kumihimo end cap here. Okay, so I've got my glue in there and now I need to just check these ends are all flush and then I'm going to make sure they all go in. Okay, if you get one that just pops out, don't panic, you're just going to push it against the others and then slide that up against them. So it's just going to go up inside. Right, so all my ends are there. It's already starting to set, I can feel it. So the glue's taking um, its grip and it's securing those in there. I've not put too much in so that it's not all squirting out. And now I want to make sure all my strands are going in the right direction so they're all running parallel so that when I put the other end on it'll look much neater. Okay, so I'm quite happy with the composition of the threads there. I'm just going to gather the end together and I will do one final check before gluing my end. So I'm just going to hold them and I just want to let the necklace sit. Okay. And then I'm happy to glue the end on. I'm going to nudge these beads around at the very last moment though to sit where I want them to. But I'm going to get the ends finished first. Make sure all these tips are flush up together. I 
I'm not putting lots in here, it's just coming out quite slowly at the moment. So I'm just making sure it don't squeeze too hard and end up with a lot of glue. So that'll be setting as well now. And we want to join the actual clasp onto these two ends. So we've got the toggle clasp. And we also have in the Kamihimo set these oval jump rings. Nice and simply hold one side of your oval ring and then the other, support that with another pair of pliers and then you just want to push one side away and bring one towards you. We're then going to hook that onto the Kumihima end and the clasp. Either side, it doesn't matter. And then you're going to close that back together. Now because we've got the end on there, you just have to take it above. loop. Make sure it's nice and flush and there's no gaps where you've joined your jump ring back together. And then we're going to do the same on this side. We're just going to open the jump ring onto the end. And the opposite side of the clasp is going to go on. I'm happy. All that is nice and together and looking good. So that's going to go through the ring, pull that and the clasp is nice and secure on that side. So I mentioned about the actual beads. I'm just going to hold this in my hand and I just want to shift the beads round so it's sat more evenly. So I'm just going to nudge that one up a bit um, just so that they can move around. And as I mentioned before, some of these seem a bit springy. But if you just hold this over um, a kettle, they will soften out. And as the oil's in the skin, um, as, as this necklace is actually worn, the oils in the skin will also soften the wax cottons so it won't be as springy as it is brand new. And there you have your beautiful multi-strand necklace. I really hope you've enjoyed the project today. If you've liked it, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Catch all of our latest tutorials. Thank you. Bye.